In this 10th lesson on digital electronics, we'll move beyond basic functionality and into coolness by learning how to design an LED chasing digital circuit. For those of you who have never heard of an LED chaser, it is loosely defined as LEDs lighting up one after another, either randomly or in a pattern that looks like they are chasing each other. The LED chaser that we will be building will have four LEDs in it, and it will require the use of all of the knowledge that we've learned through this entire course. In the upper right hand corner of your screen, you can see an example of the output we're trying to create to make the LED chaser. Four logic ones should be shifted through and then four logic zeros should be shifted through. This process should switch back and forth forever, shifting groups of four logic one and then four logic zero back and forth. To make this circuit, we must first look at the high level requirements. One, we will definitely need to have a shift register. Two, we need a way to know whether we should shift in logic zeros or logic ones to the shift register. We'll discuss using a state machine later. Three, we need a way to trigger that state machine between the two logic zero and logic one inputs. Four, we need a system clock to drive the logic circuit at a certain frequency. As before, we used the 555 timer, so we'll use it again. Let's go through the design issues one at a time. First, we need to have a shift register. That means that we'll use 4D flip-flops like we saw in the 4-bit shift register lesson. The logic diagram for this part will stay exactly the same as when we last saw it. Next we need to build what is called a state machine. And here is what is called a state diagram. Each state in a state diagram has an output and an input that tells it to change its state. In this case, state zero will always output logic zero to the shift register, and state one will always output a logic one to the shift register. But now, how do we trigger each state to be active? A very easy way to build a two state machine is to use the SR latch from lesson five. The latch will either be set or reset, meaning that the system will either be in state zero or state one. To trigger the state machine, we can use the fourth bit of the shift register, QD, to tell the state machine to return to state zero. And we can check if the entire shift register equals zero to know when to set the system to state one. If we go back to our state diagram, now we can see that when all outputs equal zero, the system moves to state one, and when QD equals one, the system resets back to state zero. Thus, the system can either be in state zero or state one. The final need is for a system clock. You can use either the 555 timer or the crystal oscillator from the components kit. We will use the 555 timer at 0.5 Hertz to start things out. So that's enough with the raw theory. Let's put everything together. Now we'll look at things at the schematic level to see how the theory maps over to reality. The first two sections of the schematic are the familiar power regulation circuit and 555 timer in A-stable mode. The more interesting parts of the schematic are the 4D flip-flops forming the shift register, QD down here setting the SR latch, and then up here checking if all shift register outputs are zero to reset the SR latch. All of that complex theory can make your head spin when you only wish to build a cool circuit, but it's important to go through that process to see how you must think when designing something new, fun, and maybe even useful. Again, here's the schematic of what we're going to build in a moment. Refer back to it if we move too fast. The parts we'll need for this experiment are the jumper wire kit, a breadboard, a nine volt battery, and from the components kit, you'll need 12 10 kilo ohm resistors, six 100 ohm resistors, six red LEDs, a 7805 five volt regulator, a 10 and 100 microfarad capacitor, a nine volt battery connector, a 555 timer, and a crystal oscillator if you want to try it out, 
two 74-74 D flip-flop ICs, a 7408 AND gate IC, and a 7402 NOR gate IC. To build the circuit, we'll start out as we always do with the 7805 going into the corner with a 9 volt battery connector connected to pins 1 and 2. The ICs will be strategically placed on the breadboard. The two breadboard bus lines are connected together with two red wires. All of the power connections are made and then all of the ground connections are made. From this point, follow the schematic carefully and refer to our time lapse currently playing to build the circuit yourself. This is the most complex circuit of the course, so it might take some time for you to assemble it together. With the circuit finally built, I'm sure you're very anxious to power it up and see how it works. So we'll connect the 9 volt battery to the system, and voila! The LEDs light up and chase each other in periods of 4. A very simple idea, but you've just witnessed how hard it can be and how much learning 10 lessons is required before making it to this step. Let's swap out the 100 microfarad capacitor for the 10 microfarad capacitor to see things move a little more quickly. When the system moves faster, like this, it is easier to see how the LEDs are chasing after each other. If you're curious and you have extra time, you can put the crystal oscillator into the circuit and see how things react. Just like with our previous two design lessons, there are actually dedicated ICs that can perform the task of LED chasing in a single IC. However, learning the all digital logic design method first is extremely important because then you know exactly what is happening on the inside and can build a better design. There's probably no real world application of an LED chaser beyond looking cool. But building something fun was the goal of this lesson. I hope you feel that we achieved it and learned something about digital logic design in the process. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. This is technically the last lesson in our Introduction to Digital Electronics course. However, two brave souls sponsored us and asked us to teach two bonus lessons. So next week, we'll start with the first bonus lesson going over the topic of more advanced 7400 series logic devices, and we'll see what we can do with them.